world. Today we're doing problem 67 at binary. This was a problem given by Tesla. So let's see what Elon Musk actually wants from us. And is it too crazy? I'm going to remove that and let's read the problem. Given two binary strings A and B, return their sum as a binary string. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So what we should do now is hopefully write them down. Write them down and think of a solution if it's going to come through mind. Now, probably you're not going to get with the solution at uh, the first glance, but what we can do is just put them down and just go through it on a pencil, paper, or just you can do it in notepad. It doesn't really matter. What is going to happen if I place one one at plus sign here and I place one on the bottom? Now, mathematics are the same doing that in binary, hexadecimal, octa it doesn't really matter you can just put things down and once we actually hit the 10 mark then we have a carry this is going to be in decimal and in binary when we once we hit two then we have a uh did you go to the carry so pretty much this doesn't change if i actually take this one one and one i can start summing them up if i sum one one, I'm also going to get two, which is going to be one zero in binary. Since I cannot place this, I'm just going to take the first, the first part, I'm just going to place zero, and then one is going to be my carry. So I'm going to have a carry, and I'm going to type it here so we don't forget, is going to be equal to a one. As soon as we move here, however, one plus zero, but we have a carry, I'm just going to add here. This is going to give me the same result. It's going to be two. So one, zero. I am going to add the zero. And of course, I will have the carry. Finally, I don't have anything to do. And I just add the carry, which is going to give me one, oh, oh, number. And if you have to think about binary, you do it like this. Two to the point two to the second is equal to four. That's pretty much it. Now, I will go through this example as well. But I want to show you that it is nothing really more than just let's say 97 plus 5. Here we have 12 and I am going to write this 2 down and I'm going to take the carry 1 and that's going to be my answer. I'm taking the carry, I'm placing it here, then I get 10, right? but I cannot write 10, I'm writing zero, and then I'm left with another carry one, I'm writing it down here, and I get 102. Mathematics don't change, so whatever you do, don't just panic, write it down, think about it, and we're going to come up with a solution. And just to be completely full, let's write down the second example, 1011, and see how is this going to turn out. This here, obviously, we're not going to have a problem. It's going to be simple one. Here, however, we're going to get two, which in binary represented is going to be O1. <laughs> Actually, not O1, one O. That's why we're writing the O and we're having a carry of one as a size. Zero plus zero is going to give me zero. Obviously, with the carry one, I'm just going to add one. One one is going to give me one zero again. So I'm just going to add zero and have another carry of one. And finally, just add the carry because I have nothing else to do. And as a result, I'm ending up with this number, 10101, which is this. And if you want to see it in binary, it's going to be one plus four plus, huh. <laughs> what is this, 16? So it's going to be 21 if I calculated that correctly. All right, well, let's see it in code. The code is a bit difficult to understand. Um, I'm going to go through it quite extensively, but just embrace yourself. Probably you're not going to understand it in the first try, so you can always rewatch the videos. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. And of course, subscribe, because otherwise I'm not going to be answering your questions. <laughs> All right, let's go. The first thing I want to do is just going to say first string index. I want to iterate through both of them and get the numbers one step at a time, calculate them, create a sum, create the carry, all of the things that we have been talking about just as of now. 
In order for me to calculate the first string index, I am going to say a length minus one. The same thing I'm going to do with the second one. So this is going to be int second string index. This is going to be equal to the length of b minus one. Obviously, you get it. We are going to the end of both of the strings. That's why we are having a length minus one here. Okay, now we need to take the carry, which is going to be zero at first, of course, and the sum, which is going to be zero at first, of course. Finally, we are expected to return a string. So this 100 is not going to be a number, it's going to be a string. And that is why we're just going to say string result result, which is going to be an empty string at first. In order for us to do the loop, I just want to make sure that both of them are bigger than no, bigger than zero, because that means that we still have something left in these. So I'm going to say, well, first string index is bigger or equal than zero, or of course, the second string index is bigger or equal, bigger, come on, bigger or equal than zero. Yes. Good. Now here I'm checking both of them because if we go to the end of the first string, as you can see here, A is um, two characters and B is one, it doesn't really mean that I have finished the calculation. So I need to go further on. That's why I'm checking them. Now I'm just going to say at the beginning of the loop, make the sum equal to the carry. In the beginning, we're not going to have anything, carry zero and sum is zero, but at the later times, we will have carries. And that's why I want to start the sum with one. This is the same thing. It's nothing more special than what I showed. If we have 97 plus five, here the sum is going to be 12 to one. And I want the next sum to start with this carry. So I'm just going to say one plus nine, right? Because I have the carry. Good. So sum is going to be equal to carry. Then I need to check a couple of things. Now, this is a more interesting part and I will explain it as well. The first thing I want to do is to check again if first string index is bigger or equal, bigger or equal than zero. Now I'm checking this because here I am allowing for something to be zero. When I have this, it means that something down there is going to be zero. So definitely I need to check it so I do not break my program. Equal to zero, then I'm going to do sum plus equal. And here I'm going to say the first string, which is going to be A, and of course the first string index parameter, which I'm going to be using. Minus, and then we have zero over here. I'm going to explain this. Just let me write again the second part. The same thing we're going to do with the second. So if the second string index is bigger or equal than zero, sorry for typing, I have a bad finger currently. Sum plus equals, and this is the second string, which is going to be B. And here I had to rename them, but let's leave them like that now. Second string index minus minus, and of course we are minusing the letter zero. Now, why are we actually doing that? Um, I'm going to go show you the ASCII characters and hopefully I'm going to find something. Oh yeah, there we go. So one thing that I want, I'm going to back, going, going back in lead code in a bit, but I want you to notice this, this thing over here. I want you to notice this, this right over here. Actually, let's, let's make this red because it's quite important. Here, we're going to see that zero is actually 48 in ASCII and one is going to be 49. So what is this actually telling you? If I'm getting a, let's say character zero, or in our case, just remember this now because we're going back, I'm going to type them. So control, control W. And here we said that zero is going to be 48 and one is going to be 49. Now I cannot say sum plus equal character, right? I'm not able to do that. I am required to have an integer in order for me to create this integer. I'm going to take the letter, which is going to be, let's say one. And here we're going to have an ASCII representation of 49 and the zero representation is going to be 48. So as soon as I say minus this, I am left out with one, which is going to be the proper result. The same thing actually is going to happen if I have a zero. If I have a zero, this one in ASCII is going to be represented as 48. And when I subtract 48 from it, I am going to be left with a zero. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. That's very important. All right. 
Moving on forward, this I think was the hardest part. Now what I need to do is to check if carry is equal to sum. So let's say is sum bigger than one. If it is, then I have a carry of one. If it's not, I'm gonna have a carry of zero. The same thing, once we actually do, since these are the numbers, I am going to calculate if one plus one, this is going to be two, meaning that I'm gonna have one zero. So I do want the carry to be, I'm checking is the sum bigger than one. If it is, then take one inside the carry. Pretty much that's it. And then I need to put it in the result plus equals. And here I'm gonna say sum modulus two and dot two string, because obviously I want to return string as we, all have, we have already mentioned over here. Now I'm saying modulus two because obviously we're working in binary. We don't want anything else. So that's why I'm saying modulus two here. All right. The final part now is going to be a bit uh, more different, at least in C sharp. And it's going to be a bit more different in C sharp because we're having uh, C sharp specifics. So I'm going to first check to see if the carry is emptied out. So if carry is bigger than zero, I'm just going to say result plus equal carry dot two string. Obviously at the end of the loop, I'm saying, all right, do I have one as a carry as we have uh, so here, I believe it was, you can see here. And actually you can see here because once we actually finished the calculations, we were left with zero one zero one. And I'm basically adding the carry here at the end. In our case, it's going to be in the end, but we want it to be in the beginning over here. That's why what we need to do is actually, what we're left to do is to reverse this string that we have been building. Now, that's interesting because in C sharp, you cannot just say dot reverse. You need to actually write it. Strings are immutable, and that's why we first cast it to character array, and then we actually reverse it. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to say private string reverse, and I'm gonna pass a string. I'm gonna call it S. Now, in order for us to reverse it, it's very simple, really. We need to cast it to a character array. So this is going to be char array, and I'm gonna call it char array. It's gonna be equal to our string to char array function. All right, slick. Then I can just say array.reverse, and I can reverse the array. Which array I do want to reverse? This one. I'm just going to paste it here. And finally, I need to return it but I need to return a string of it. So I'm just going to say new string of our char array that we have already reversed. And that's pretty much it. So what's left for us to do is to actually say return, reverse, and then we're passing the string we want to reverse, which is going to be result. And here, actually, we're passing return reverse because reverse is returning something on its own. So that's going to work out. Let's run the code and see if it's going to work because this video got a little bit longer and let's now send it to the server. All right, that's it. So congratulations on passing your Tesla coding interview. The final part to talk about is of course, time and space complexity. And as a space, I am going to say I have a linear because down there I was creating a whole new string. Time complexity, nothing fancy. Again, we have linear and that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll see you in the next one.